Israeli bombs have been falling on Gaza for another day. There are reports of airstrikes on the southern cities of Khan Yunus and Rafah, where hundreds of thousands of civilians are seeking shelter. In the Israeli military's next stage in the war, the defence minister says they'll take a more targeted approach and use fewer troops in the north of the Gaza Strip, but continue to pursue the leaders of Hamas in the south. Hamas is considered a terror group by Germany, the EU and many others. Smoke rises over Han Yunus in southern Gaza as Israel's military continues to bombard suspected Hamas hideouts. The fighting has severely hampered aid deliveries to the Strip. The UN says some convoys have even been shot at. This is the first medical delivery to arrive in Han Yunus in 10 days. Buildings across the territory have been reduced to rubble. Some 85% of Gazans are now internally displaced. In a statement released on Friday, the UN's emergency relief coordinator said three months on from the October 7th attacks by Hamas, Gaza has, quote, become a place of death and despair. Families are sleeping in the open as temperatures plummet. Areas where civilians were told to relocate for their safety have come under bombardment. People are facing the highest levels of food insecurity ever recorded. Famine is around the corner. Gaza has simply become uninhabitable. On Friday, the Israeli military said its forces hit more than 100 targets in 24 hours alone, including military positions, rocket launch sites and weapons depots. As the fighting continues, the UN says supplies vital to the survival of Gaza's two million residents are virtually non-existent. And there are fears the war and suffering could expand to Israel's northern border with Lebanon, as both sides exchange fire on an almost daily basis. In an attempt to stop the conflict from spreading, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has arrived in Greece on the second leg of a week-long crisis tour. The first leg of the diplomatic marathon took him to Turkey, where he's met uh, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, whose vocal support of Hamas has raised concerns in the West. Blinken will later travel to Israel, the occupied West Bank and five Arab nations. All right, well, for more on this, let's cross now to Sinan Gidi, Associate Professor of National Security Studies at the Marine Corps University in Washington, D.C. Welcome to DW. So what do you make of Blinken's meetings today? So he has an uphill battle, I think, with the Turkish authorities because there's increased concern going forward. Since the October 7 attacks occurred in Israel, that Turkey is a material supporter, along with Qatar, of Hamas. And significant research shows that Turkey is one of the main financial hubs which the terrorist entity basically uh, is, is, is able to, to funnel a considerable amount of funds to the organization in Gaza, but also other operations overseas outside of Gaza. Um, so what part of Blinken's job is actually to request or insist Turkish authorities to, to take measures against this. In fact, just before Blinken's visit, uh, the State Department released a, a number of names, uh, Hamas members residing in Turkey and offered a bounty uh, for, 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 for their capture. Uh, the secretary has an uncomfortable task, unfortunately, of asking Turkey to essentially end or significantly scale down its support of Hamas because everything that the United States does in trying to assist Israel to, 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 to combat this terrorist entity is enabled and uh, continued by the Turkish Republic. And therefore, this presents a significant challenge for the United States and Israel and its other allies who want to see the, the, the elimination of Hamas going forward. All right, so the US sides firmly with Israel, but um, the Turkish president uh, has compared uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to Adolf Hitler and said he should be prosecuted for, quote, war crimes. So. It looks like it's going to be difficult, um, from what you're saying, um, for the US and Turkey. Um, but how do you think they're going to go about it? How do you think these discussions are going to go if they're trying to find some sort of middle ground between, let's not forget, these two allies? That's a good question. I think the, the Biden administration 
is going to hit a wall uh, simply because I don't think they have the decisiveness needed to actually p take punitive measures against Turkey to essentially stop aiding and abetting a terrorist entity that's recognized by the United States and the European Union. And also, Turkey continues to harbor some of its leadership, uh, has provided passports, as well as material shipments of weapons-grade material to Hamas. I don't think the Biden administration has the chops to essentially ch to hold Turkey to task. And also, I'll also be honest with you, too, in the sense that the, the Erdogan government, yes, it's, he's compared Netanyahu to a Nazi. He's called for a boycott of Israeli goods by Turkish citizens inside of Turkey. But in, trade with, with, with Israel has only increased by about a third since the October 7 attacks. Right. So Erdogan is actually being disingenuous and duplicitous in his stance against Israeli action against Hamas, simply because he doesn't want to you know, cut trade and, and you know, loss of business right. with, 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 uh, with Israel on the one hand, but he wants to hold that account on the other. And also the Biden administration is not just looking at the Turkey from the perspective of Israel and Hamas. It's looking at from you know, the, the extent to which will Turkey cooperate with other things that are priorities for the United States, such as uh, the admission of Sweden into NATO, uh, which still, you know, uh, Turkey is holding back on. And in return for Turkey saying yes to that, Erdogan wants the United States to sell it F-16 fighter jets. So there's a broader portfolio of issues. But on the Hamas-Israel issue, I don't think the Biden administration or the secretary is going to get very far. Thanks, Sinan. Sinan Gidi from the Marine Corps University in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Let's go to Istanbul, where DW's... Yulia Han is standing by. Yulia, good to see you. The U.S. sides firmly with Israel, which the Turkish president has compared to Nazi Germany. What common ground could these two possibly find? Well, I think uh, both Ankara and Washington have no interest in this uh, Israel-Hamas war spiraling totally out of control and turning into a wider regional war. I think uh, there is also common ground when it comes to uh, getting better access uh, for aid to get into Gaza to help uh, Palestinians there who need it so uh, desperately. Um, I think the talks today were rather tense and tricky for Mr. Blinken, uh, but there was no press conference after either of his meetings here in Istanbul today that would have given us a better idea and sense of the atmosphere, particularly of his meeting with President Erdogan. You mentioned uh, the differences. Turkey is an important but also a very difficult NATO ally for Washington. Uh, Turkish President Erdogan has uh, emerged as one of the fiercest critics of the Israeli military campaign uh, in Gaza. He has uh, repeated verbally attacked Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I think Washington would like to see Erdogan to tone down these verbal uh, attacks. Another important issue, I believe, is Turkey's continued support for Hamas because Erdogan does not consider the militant group a terrorist organization. Rather, he thinks they are a legitimate political force. Hamas officials have found a safe haven here in Turkey in recent years, and uh, the U.S. Uh, does seem to believe that several uh, alleged Hamas operatives are still here in uh, Turkey. Um, so uh, there are a lot of differences, but as I said, uh, there is also common ground. And I think it's important for the U.S. to make sure that Turkey will be on board when it comes to any uh, post-war plans for Gaza, however they might look like. And Yulia, you mentioned it before, NATO, that's another issue on their agenda. Yes, very high on the agenda. We know uh, from the Turkish foreign minister that that was part of today's talks. Uh, Turkey is one of uh, two NATO members, the other one being Hungary, who have been uh, blocking Sweden's uh, bid to join NATO. Uh, the Turkish government has been dragging out that whole matter for more than one and a half years now. Although President Erdogan has given his uh, green light after uh, using his leverage to extract some concessions, not only from from Sweden, but still there needs to be a full parliamentary vote here in Turkey on Sweden's accession protocol. I think uh, Mr. Blinken wanted to get reassurances that this will indeed happen better sooner than later. But we also know that the Turkish government has made another demand. They want uh, a deal with the U.S. on, on F-16 fighter jets uh, to go ahead. Uh, that is one key demand from the Turkish side. And we will see uh, what uh, will happen to that demand. Julia Hahn, thank you.